all right guys welcome back i'm back with another video yes i am going to be talking to the single mothers out there but first of all i gotta give an honor to god who's the head of my life cannot do this life without him and i hope all you guys are blessed out there now before i start this video is three shout outs i do want to do and that is to diamond royal ministries Hello, girl. How you doing? Keep up the good work. Love your videos. Yes, I do. Keep text speaking the truth. That's what I'm all about, guys, is the truth. Yes, yeah, sometimes the truth can ruffle feathers, but hey, it is what it is. Next shout out, new breed. New breed, new breed. Brother, you got it going on. Keep up the good work. Love your work. Love your work. And last but not least, Ringo Reactions TV. You did it. Congratulations to you. I'm happy for you. You're going to love it. You're going to love, love it. Keep up the good work, Ringo. Keep telling the truth. No matter how many feathers you have to ruffle, keep up the good work. Now. All that is done. Now I'm going to get off into my little video that I am um, the Lord put uh, something on my heart to come and share. I don't know who this video is for, but I'm coming to share uh, my, you might as well say my little story of how I came out of the urban area. Being a single parent. I was, a, I'm a, I was a single parent. Well, all my kids are now grown and have their own families now. And um, I live alone uh, by myself. Um, but I am in the country now. That's why I was letting Ringo know you're going to love it. You're going to love it. But, um, yes, I stay alone uh, in the country. And um, that was the best move I ever made one of the best moves I ever made. Single parents, I'm here to uplift you guys. Letting you know it can be done because every generation, it just, it's a cycle in the urban areas. It's a cycle. It keeps repeating itself with your mother, then your grandmother, then your generation. And then it, you have children. It keeps repeating itself. The cycle do. Nobody never really get out of the ghetto. And that is the, that is the truth. I raised three successful children. I sat back and looked at my life one day. I used to live in low-income housing. And I would not wonder for the life of me. Who, in their right mind, how could I say this? How could I say this? No, I'm going to rephrase that. Change your mindset. Because the people that do live there, they do have a poverty mindset. Yes, they do. I can speak on that because I did too. Not pointing the fingers at nobody. I had to change the way I think. God had to come in. You know, I wasn't saved back then. I didn't give, I, you know, I wasn't saved. I wasn't walking with the Lord, but the Holy Spirit was with me all the time. God was with me every step of the way. So, I looked around my neighborhood when I was living in low income. And I look to my left, you got people drinking and smoking. I look to the right, you got the people clubbing and stripping. And, and this is a cycle that keeps constantly repeating itself. I said to myself, it has to be a better way. It has to be more to life than this. And, uh. You don't. You, everything is convenient for you. Ringo was right. You in this little section, and that's what the system is designed to do. 
keep you in a poverty mindset. Yes, they do. When you do try to get out of the hole or climb out of that barrel, you got folks pulling you back down. Even the system will pull you back down. Because when you start making a little bit of money, hmm, the system cuts you off. And a lot of single parents, they own government assistance because they're scared the, to make uh, extra money. I'm just going, I'm just, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. And uh, I'm just going to be truthful about it. I was there. When, I, when my kids were small, I had to think of a way. How am I going to get out together? I can't live like this. I cannot live my life like this. God made a big world. And it's a beautiful world. And it's a whole lot to see. Why am I going to sit up here and have a poverty mindset when I know it's more to life than just this? Mm -mm. So, me and my three kids, as they, you know, growing, constantly growing I used to always tell my kids nobody's going to give you nothing you got to work for what you want uh, if you want a decent to live a decent lifestyle you got to work for that then you got the poverty people wants to stay in poverty they think that is really cool to do you know, go out there and hustle their little quarters and dimes and nickels. They hustle seven, eight dollars and they think they got some change. I Like I said, I'm not sugarcoating it. Come on, peoples. If that's your life, I feel for you. I really do. What I did, as I looked around, I said, life ain't nothing but Decisions, decisions, decisions. I made it up in my mind. I'm getting me and my kids up out of here. Let me tell you something. A little hard work don't hurt nobody. Trust and believe. Now, I'm here in Michigan. Michigan is the Motor City, basically. These are where all your big three factories are at, and it's loaded with factories. So yes, I was a factory worker. I can only sit on assistance for so long. I was like, it's, this is not enough money. This is not the lifestyle I want to live. It, I don't want to be going to food pantries. I don't want to be doing this because I'm going to tell you guys uh, uh, later on in a minute something about them food pantries too. You guys probably didn't think about this. But uh, I got out there, I found myself a job. It was a factory job. Yes, I was, like I said before, I'm going to repeat it again, I was a factory worker. The first year I worked eight hours, had the weekends off. The second year, they put me on 12 hours, seven days. Now, I remind you, I'm a woman. It's about, in the factories, so maybe three, four women in a whole factory. Yeah, and I'm, I'm one of them. <laughs> I'm like, okay, if they could I, could, I could do this, you know. But it is consequences behind working in those factories. And my mother was right, because my mother was a big three worker. She uh, got a job at Ford, Ford Motor Company at the age of 18. And that was the only job she had until she retired. So, no, I didn't work at Ford's. I worked at a plant that made parts for Ford's, Chrysler's, and GM. So, the money was great. You was, you know, back then, now, back then, when my kids was little, $1,000 a week was a lot of money. That's what uh, we were bringing home back then. Okay, now, you know, prices have raised, everything is raised up, the kids are making more money than we have ever made back in the day. 
to be honest with you. So I started working those days. And you, let me tell y'all another thing, single parents, your children are watching you. They're watching every move you make. Trust and believe. I didn't know my children was watching me until my daughter wrote me a letter. And she told me that, Mom, I feel bad for you sometime because you come home from work, you sit on the side of the bed and just start crying. And that's just, I did that. I was hurting, in pain, and I didn't like the job. But I had to do what I had to do. I had to get in there with the best of them and slang that steel. Yes, I did. If I wanted out of the ghetto, I had to put in a little hard work. I'm not going to say mothers. I'm not going to tell you mothers is going to be easy because it's not. Anything you want, you're going to have to work for it. And you're going to have to work hard for it. You're going to have to put in a little work now. That's what you're going to have to do. You want to get you and your family up out of that place. Because if anything was to happen in this world, they're going to attack the urban areas first. They already uh, put bad food in the urban community. Trust me, when I moved out of the urban area and came into the country, the food tastes different. The water tastes different. Everything was different. It was fresher. I had a friend that came and visited me one time, went in my cookie jar and got a cookie. He bit the cookie. You know what he told me? He said, my God, this cookie tastes so fresh. And I'm looking at him like, what do you mean? It's just a cookie. He say, no, it's a difference. He said, I never tasted a cookie this fresh. So I started looking into me and my daughter. We said the same thing when we moved uh, out here. The food is tastes so different. Why is the food tasting so different? Because once... They get done serving all the other communities. The food that nobody wants goes to the urban area. Think about this. Ain't nobody talking. <clears throat> Ain't nobody talking about this neither. Trust and believe. They're not. It blew my mind when I did a search. This is why you have such cheap meat in the urban areas. They slap a for sale sign on the meat so you can get this for five, ten dollars here. It's a reason for that. You know, everybody, yeah, I know people like to coupon and save money, but when it comes to buying your groceries and what you're putting in your body, you're going to have to spend a little money. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You're going to have to spend a little money. Yes, I buy things that's on sale too. But when you do get that item home, you got to cook that first. Because half of that meat, be it, it goes bad. It, it goes bad real fast. And uh, especially, you know, in Detroit. They have these little uh, Arab stores and everything, and you can get a whole bunch of meat for $100. Come on now, y'all. Mm -mm. And I, you, I, went, I think I went there a couple of times and got some meat when I was uh, living, living in uh, low-income apartments trying to save money. I stopped going there because I kept saying, this meat is bad. Every time you open a pack, you know, they can doctor that meat up to look good. But that meat is bad. Watch what you're feeding your children out there, people. Yes, it may cost a little bit more money to uh, buy a little higher, you know, priced food. But you got to uh, be mindful of what you're putting in your body also. But yeah. <clears throat> the food thing, it blew me and my daughter's mind.
I'm like, wow, I didn't see that one coming. But single parents, single mothers, parents, whatever, I know it's hard out there. I know you're doing everything by yourself. You're trying to work. You're trying to cook dinner for your kids, keep your house clean, um, do sit down, do help your kids with your homework, go to teacher conference meeting. I mean, doing all of this. If your kids is in sports, you have to do that too. You just have to find a way to do it. Yes, I know it's hard. Been there, done that. Working 12 hours, seven days. If I had my children had a teacher conference meeting, that was the time I had to call off from work. They came first. Got no job. I don't know if a lot of mothers and parents are doing this to this day, but I would work 12 hours, seven days. When I got home, I did not sit down. I did not sit down at all because if I sat down, it was over. I came home. I fixed dinner for my children. They had a hot plate at that table. Made sure their homework was done. Made sure their school clothes was laid out. Made sure everything was complete so we can do this over again. They was uh, a little up in age then. But still, you have to stay on them. They were old enough for me to go to work without a paying a babysitter then. Thank God, oh my God, babysitters are expensive nowadays. <laughs> Tell me about it. But um, I'm telling you, you got to do what you have to do for your children. I always had breakfast prepared if it wasn't nothing but those uh, sausages you can heat up in the microwave or pancakes you can eat up in the microwave for my children. I know that was not good for them, but back then I'm thinking, okay, I gotta get my kids up out of here and this is what I did. I had to uh, have their breakfast, they lunch, they had breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and a snack before they went to bed. I don't know if parents are doing this nowadays, but back then, this is how we were taught. Because each generation, let me tell you another thing, guys. Each generation is getting weaker and weaker and weaker. Mm -hmm. My mother was stronger than me. And each generation I'm seeing getting weaker. They can't do what we did back in the day, the younger generation. You tell somebody to go work 12 hours, 7 days, they'll look at you like, they, like you done lost your mind. Yes, my two boys always used to tell me, Mama, when we, yes, we struggled for a, a good while until I got in that factory. After that, struggle stopped. You bank your money and all this kind of stuff like this. And this was another thing, single mothers. Please put your children first. Because I see so many people. They be dressed down in Gucci and name brand clothes. And they kids running around with a saggy diapers and they nose running. Something is wrong with that picture. Trust me, something is very wrong with that picture. And these are the people you know don't really have no money because you're wearing what you what what, what you got <laughs> you're wearing it then you go to their houses and i hope i'm not talking to nobody that is like this you you you, you dress you know down to the gills and you go to your house and you don't have no groceries in your refrigerator you're behind in your rent your lights about to get cut off come on now your home put your priorities in order first uh, single mothers. The roof over your head come first. Pay your bills next. Take care of your children. If you have to go without, you just have to go without. Flat out. It is what it is. Them kids come first. I, you know, I hope, uh, that's what uh, my single parents are doing out there, 
taking care of their children first, putting their children first. Well, first of all, it goes like this. You put God first. You put God first. Then your husband, your, the husband is the lead. Then you and your children. Yes. It's, it's, it's a pyramid thing. You see, a lot of people, a lot of women don't like to submit, neither. And that's another thing. Yes, I was married for years. That was my decision. Things happen. Yes, it do. One day I might tell y'all about that story. <laughs> but anywho, I just want to uplift and make sure you guys, please take care of them babies out there. Them babies didn't ask to be born. Take care of your children. Show them. Let them know it's more to life than just smoking, drinking, and getting high what they're seeing. Because what they're seeing is what they're going to mimic. Exactly. My three children mimicked me. The work They looked at my work, work ethic, and that's what they did. I always said, I want y'all, I told these, tell my kids, I want y'all to be better than me. This is one thing. You don't compete with nobody. I want you just to be better than I did. My oldest son seen the struggle. My middle son seen the struggle. Yes, they did. All three of my kids did. They said they did not want to live like that. And I don't blame them. But once they got of age and started working themselves, they had jobs. They started off with jobs at first. It was a long, hard road for them to get there. And now, hey, they have their own businesses. Yes, they do. It took a while. It took time. Yes, it did. But they got there. They did not want to have their children go through that struggle. And I applaud them for that. Yes, I do. I applaud them for that. What I did was got out of uh, the ghetto, put them in blue ribbon schools. Yes, it was hard. I had to go to work sick. I had to go to work hurt. No matter what happened, I had to go to work. Because what nobody going to hand me nothing. And I wasn't going to ask nobody for a dime. I had to do this. These are my babies. And I'm going to show them that this is a better way out here. Yes. So thank God my grandchildren... They don't even know what a struggle is, to be honest. They never seen it, never laid eyes on it. And I thank God for that. I don't, I don't wish that on my worst enemy to struggle like that. And especially if you have a, um, a, a handicapped child, that's even harder. So, Mother, you keep your head up. I'm going to be praying for you. And if you ever want to talk, ever want to talk, you give me an email. Put your phone number in there. I will call you. I will talk to you. I could tell you a lot of stories. My kids wasn't always good. They were bad. They were bad. <laughs> they were, ooh, they were something about. But we made it with the grace of God. If it wasn't for God carrying us through, no, we wouldn't have made it because I always put God first. Even though I was not in the church at the time, I still put God first in everything I did. Everything. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. My kids now look at me, you know, I'm, an independent woman, still independent, you know. I'm now on a fixed income because working in those factories, when you work like that, I worked over 30 years in a factory. It breaks down your body. Yes, it do. This is how I ended up on Social Security Disability. I broke my body down. That was a sacrifice. That's okay. 
I'm still here. I may be on a fixed income. And let me break this down to y'all. A lot of people think uh, it's, it's, I think, two or three Social Security things. Let me break something down to y'all. It's Social Security Disability, and it's SSI. Let me tell y'all something. something tell, tell the people something. SSI is for the people did not put in work hours. So the SSI check that they get is like a welfare check. Five or $600 a month, that's what they get. Social Security Disability. In order to get Social Security Disability, you have to put in work hours. You have to put in actually a lot of work hours. They start us off. That's a whole different bracket. You know, a little under a thousand. That's how they start us off. About that. A little on about seven eight hundred dollars when i got on it it was 750 a month but after that the social security now you got social security kicks in when you become a certain age so that's how that is working a lot of people get that confused Social Security is, is, is two forms of it for the people that work and the people did not work. They did not work at all. They relied on the system. And I mean, both of them really, you know, don't give you enough money. But uh, I get enough to pay my rent where I live at. My rent is under a thousand. And I get enough to pay my rent and my bills and still have money left over. And what I do need if I need anything, I don't ask my kids to help me. I don't ask my kids to give me a dime. They just do what they do. Like they told me, Mom, you took care of us all those years. We seen the struggle. And now it's time for us to take care of you. What can I say after that? Nothing. I put my, I was speechless when they told me this. No, if I lack anything, matter of fact, I don't even go to them and ask them for anything. They just come and give me a car. They pay the bill, the car, the credit card bill every month. If it's anything I need, I just slide, slide the car. But I don't really slide the cars like that. <laughs> no, I don't. Anything you see, my ordering from Timu and all that, that is with my own money. Yes, my own money. Not my kids' money. Mm -mm. Now, if I have to pay for medicine, I may slide the car. Because sometimes I do have to pay for my medication. But I just wanted to break that down to uh, a couple people. It is a difference. And my single mothers, it is worth the sacrifice. You're young. You're vibrant. You're in your 20s. You're in your 30s. Get out there and make it happen. You can do this. If I can do it and raise three kids, I know you can do it. I know you can do it. And when I, every time I got pregnant, I worked while I was pregnant up until my eighth month. Then I went on maternity leave. Yes, I did. You guys can do it. If you really want to get out the ghetto, it can be done. The reason why I say that, because I did it. So I, I can't hear no excuses. No, I, I can't hear that. Mm -mm. I know it can be done if you want to do it. You have to change your mindset. Get out of that poverty mindset. Because that's a poverty mindset. Then people will 
be be in the in the ghetto for the rest of their lives. They will die there. They're they're just existing. They're not even living. They don't even know what it's like to travel. They don't even know what it's like to just just do things, you know, Disneyland, here, there. They don't, they, come on. Start living, peoples. But single parents, it can be done. You could take your kids on those trips. Yes, you can. If you have to save up two years, three years, you can do it. Show your children it's another way. And that's what the Lord put on my heart to talk to you single mothers. And like I said before, if you guys need to talk about anything, I don't charge nobody for talking. Uh, give me an email and I will hit you back up. Like I always say in my videos, you keep your head up, you stay strong out there, and you keep the faith. Because without faith, you can't do nothing. You can't do nothing without that faith. And stay safe out there. Stay very safe. Watch your surroundings. If you have to go out, go with somebody. You know, nowadays, it's, it's, it's just go with somebody. Just stay safe out there. Stay safe from the narcissists. Stay safe from the people who want to take advantage of you. Stay safe from everybody. Because I gave my testimony how God, how I got saved. If you want to hear that, uh, hear my testimony, go back to that video. Because it is a spirit world out there, guys. And before I get off of this vid, before I get off this video, repent, guys. Repent of your sins. Please, I beg of you. I really do beg of you. Repent. Repent, repent, repent. Because God is on his way back. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And on that note, I will connect with you guys in my next video, which would be real soon. So, I hope you guys have a beautiful night. I'm going to have a beautiful uh, night myself. And uh, I'm getting ready to lay down and relax. That's what I'm getting ready to do. But single mothers, you keep your head up. Y'all can do this. Y'all got this. The ones who want to get out the ghetto, y'all got this. Put your boots on and strap them up. Roll your sleeves up. It's time to go to work. Mm-hmm. Time to go to work. All right. Bye-bye, guys.